Hey everyone, and welcome to another one of these weekly art videos. I hope you're having an amazing day wherever you are in the world, and thanks so much for joining me on this one. In today's video, I'm gonna be sharing a simple but incredibly effective drawing exercise for the total beginner. In my opinion, after having been on my journey for many years and having helped so many others out as well, there are two basic super essential skills that any beginner getting started on their drawing journey should focus on developing. And these are their observational skills and their fine motor skills. We must strengthen our observational skills and this connection between our eyes, our brains, and our muscles, right? We're moving our hand and our arm simultaneously to taking in visual information through our eyes. All of this has to be strengthened first and foremost. The exercise that I'm going to be sharing with you today is going to help you start doing just that. And it's also going to challenge you to recreate shapes and proportions and locations of elements within a picture plane effectively, which are also essential skills that you're going to need for any kind of artwork that you may choose to work on in the future. And what's super cool about this exercise is that you only need a minimum amount of supplies. You literally just need a pencil, an eraser, and if you don't have a sketchbook, you can just use a sheet of printing paper. And another thing is that you can make this exercise more challenging or less challenging depending on your current level. I challenge you to give this exercise a go. And if you do give this one a go and you're over on Instagram, make sure to share your work over there on an Instagram post. I'll make sure to leave my Instagram handle down below and I'll be giving everyone that gives this exercise a go and tags me in their work a shout out via my Instagram stories. I cannot wait to see what you do. All right, everyone, let's get started with this beginner drawing exercise. So I have a few drawing supplies with me. I have a nine by 12 inch sketchbook. I have a 2B drawing pencil and I have a regular soft graphite eraser. I did bring in a ruler in order to prepare two rectangles in exactly the same size for me in one of these pages in the sketchbook. It's very important that you prepare two spaces for yourself to draw in that are exactly the same size. They don't have to be rectangles, they can be squares, but I would highly recommend that these drawing spaces that you prepare for yourself are relatively large, medium to large in size. Don't try to draw in super small spaces because what happens when you draw in super small uh, drawing spaces is you're gonna find the need to hold your pencil very tightly like this and you're not really going to get to practice moving your entire arm and drawing from the shoulder and holding your pencil effectively for drawing. Make sure that the drawing spaces that you prepare for yourself are medium to larger in size. If you just have smaller sketchbooks, then I would recommend using regular printing paper and you can make two rectangles inside of one of those regular printing paper sheets. Or another option is you can use two separate sheets of drawing paper or printing paper and create one of your drawing spaces in one of your sheets and the second drawing space in the second sheet. So to measure everything out and to make sure that my lines were straight, I did use a ruler. The rectangles that I've prepared for myself are 7 inches by 4.5 inches. You can make your drawing spaces slightly smaller than this or slightly larger than this, but I would not recommend working in say half this size because you're not gonna get as much practice and skill development if you work in super small spaces. So let me explain what we're gonna be doing. First, we're gonna be adding a combination of geometric and organic shapes into this first space. Shape is an element of art along with color, form, line, space, texture, and value. There are two different kinds of shapes. There are geometric shapes and there are organic shapes. The easiest and most concise way for me to explain the difference between a geometric shape and an organic shape is that 
Geometric shapes are the ones that we study in math classes. So squares, cubes, rectangles, rectangular prisms, triangles, pyramids, cones, trapezoids, hexagons, all of those. Yes, there are certain shapes that have curves to them like spheres and cylinders and circles and semicircles, but a lot of them have lots of straight lines and very specific angles. Now, organic shapes are those kinds of shapes that you see more in nature. So think leaves, clouds, trees, and even think of the very irregular splatters created by liquids. When liquids fall, they create this very irregular organic shapes like splatters of paint or that kind of shape that has tons of curves to it. When it comes to organic shapes, usually there is a lot of asymmetry and irregularity present. And there can be symmetrical organic shapes, but out in nature, it's gonna be very difficult for you to find a perfect, absolutely 100% symmetrical organic shape. But that is a very brief explanation on shape. Again, the point here is to use a combination of geometric and organic shapes. Think of this as a little abstract piece, a little abstract composition that you're gonna be creating. Don't overdo it with your amount of shapes that you add in here. Make sure that you're leaving some negative space or inactive area, if you will, in between your, your shapes. And do take into account that the more shapes you add in and the more overlapping you have of your shapes in your space, the more difficult you're gonna make the exercise, okay? So I would always recommend starting simple, starting with fewer shapes, and maybe starting with shapes that are easier for you to draw, and then moving on from there as you continue developing your ability to recreate shape and proportion and location and all of this. Once you have your little abstract composition created with a combination of geometric and organic shapes in this first space, here comes the exercise you're gonna be recreating whatever you did over here as closely as possible freehand over here in the second space. And that is essentially the exercise. That's what we're gonna be doing. To be pencil on hand, and I'm just gonna start creating my organic and geometric shapes. I'm gonna start off with like a diamond shape here coming off the picture plane and usually adding in cropped shapes like this is also going to be more challenging. But I would recommend playing with cropping uh, shapes out. A long rectangle. I'm gonna add in an organic shape. Okay, I have a couple of geometric shapes and one organic shape. I'm gonna continue adding some more. kind of semicircle there. You can erase certain little sections of some lines if you want to. It's totally up to you. All right, so for me, these are already enough shapes. And the type of shape that I have added in, the overlapping, all of this is going to present a good challenge for me and my current level. But here's where the challenge comes. Now I have to freehand try to recreate as closely as possible everything that I did over here, over here in this empty space. I would highly recommend drawing lightly so that you can erase mistakes as you go. And something that's really helpful is in your mind's eye, create a vertical line right in the middle 
and a horizontal line right in the middle and asking yourself, is this line or shape that I'm trying to draw on the left or on the right or above or below that halfway point? Observe the angles created by the lines making up those shapes. And curves are, of course, going to be way harder than straighter lines, at least they are for me. I can already see that my shape is wider than this one over here. So I'm going to bring it in. This is why it's so important to keep your drawing light. And something that is incredibly helpful is not only noticing the shape itself, but the negative space, negative areas around or in between shapes, because that is a shape in and of itself. And so when we're trying to recreate the actual shapes, we're also trying to recreate the negative shapes. And so really acknowledge this space over here as a shape that you're trying to recreate as well. Let's see how well I do with this organic shape here. I'm noticing how far away the edge of the shape is from the edge of the picture plane. That is another thing that I'm constantly observing using the lines, the edges of my picture plane as a kind of guideline or anchor point. This is wider here than it is in my, in my sketch. So what am I gonna have to move to make it more similar? And this is such a great way to continue developing your observational skills. I'm going to bring this down using my eraser to refine my shape. The more elements or lines you start adding into your drawing, the more points of comparison or landmarks you have to notice little errors. You have more things to relate the current shapes that you've added in with or to, and this means that you have a greater opportunity to see mistakes so that you can fix them. And you don't have to work from top to bottom, uh, but wherever it is that you start, it is helpful to continue building on that section because as I said, if you have close elements to that shape or you start drawing a shape right next to a shape or a combination of shapes that you've already added in, then it's easier for you to relate uh, that new element with those elements that you've already drawn in. The closer the elements are, the more errors you're going to be able to see. You're able to see more of that negative space created by elements that are next to each other or overlapping. You're able to see the angles that they create when they are placed next to each other. You're able to see how different elements align and all of these things. And the closer that they are together, the easier it's going to be for you to see these things. So wherever it is that you start, I would recommend continuing at least a bit longer in that same area before moving on to another area. All right, so that's kind of that organic shape there. I'm gonna move on to adding more elements beneath it, and then if I notice I have to change something or fix something, I'll go ahead and do that later. I'm gonna do this triangle first. Smaller triangle inside. See, now that I've added in this smaller triangle inside of a larger triangle, I can see that there's definitely something different in my drawing. There's something that I need to fix. So what is it? Is it this line here? Is it this line over here? I think it definitely is. I see a way smaller space here when compared to this space over here. 
So what is it that I need to fix? Is it this line? Do I need to bring it up? Is it this line? Do I need to bring it down? I think it is. I think I'm gonna bring down this bottom line. So I'm gonna make this bigger. I'm gonna erase that section of that organic shape as well. And what I'm noticing now is that this curve comes way lower in this triangle than it does over here. In this triangle, it's closer to this point over here, and in this triangle, there's more of a distance. So I may have to bring in this curve kind of like that. These skills that you're building, your observational skills, your visual measuring skills, your ability to compare your sketch with the reference and be able to tell those mistakes in order to correct them, those are all the same skills that you need to freehand draw pretty much anything, whether it's a face, an animal, a landscape, a still life arrangement. This exercise allows you to start developing those basic skills. I still see a difference between this width and this width, so I might have to bring this line a little bit higher, erase this line here, and I'm going to add in that semicircle starting with the straight line. And I'm already seeing another mistake because this, if I add in the semicircle here, there is way less of a distance between this edge and this edge than this edge to this edge. So what can I do? Perhaps I have to bring out this line further to the left. And perhaps I have to move this triangle a little bit more to the left as well. Now it looks a lot more similar. I'm going to bring this down a little, this angle just a little bit. Here's another very interesting negative space right here. How similar is that negative space to this negative space? Right? That is a shape in and of itself that I need to recreate over here. Now that I've fixed this one, I can go ahead and use this as a guide for adding in this shape here. And this just goes to show how important it is that you take your time with the element on hand before moving on to the next. As a rule of thumb, I don't move on to the next element until I feel I've gotten that one element that I am currently working on as close as possible to that shape in the reference, at least as close as possible that I feel I can get it to without adding in more elements around it, more anchor points. I think my angles of my lines are a little bit off. Okay, that's close enough. So now I'm gonna work on the shape that I've been avoiding <laughs> and I'm gonna start adding it in. I'm just focusing on the upper edge right now. Up, oh, this is way off, it has to come down lower. Then it curves up. I'm going to add in a little tick mark or a little curve here so that I know that this shape has to connect to that line, reach that line. I'm going to make my way back, grab my eraser and correct this. And now I can observe that this space here, my negative space in between these two shapes is nothing like this one. Now I can tell that there is an issue with this shape. I'm gonna have to bring this up. This curve is probably wider in my sketch, in my second sketch. 
than the first. So I'm going to bring this up. Correct that there. This is way more challenging than it seems. It's a great exercise. I'm going to bring this curve in. Now I can see that I have to bring up this curve a little bit because there's a greater distance between the edge of this shape here and the edge of this shape here. So I bring this up. All right, so all of my shapes are in and now I am coming back and seeing everything as a whole and noticing any minor errors that need to get fixed. I can tell that this snake looking shape comes down lower than mine. You can even use your pencil as a measuring tool. This is shorter than this. So I can bring this down. It's a tiny bit closer, but I think I'm going to leave it at that. All right, so I'm going to give you one more tip if you want to take this further, or if you're having trouble pinpointing differences, this is really going to help. So bring in some kind of thick, dark marker. It can be black or any other dark color. And what you're going to do is trace over all of your pencil lines and your shapes. And you're going to do this over both of your drawings. You want to do this carefully, be as true to the pencil lines that you've created as possible. And sometimes just by me having traced over all my shapes with this thicker line and bolder blacker line, that in and of itself allows me to see differences much more clearly than what I was able to see with my lighter pencil. For example, I can see a difference between this smaller triangle and its placement within this larger triangle and this smaller triangle. This one is touching this line for this other shape and this one doesn't reach this line. I can also see that this semicircle is larger than this one and perhaps the angle is a little bit off. But I'm going to show you another extra little trick. So I've cut out these two drawings and because we know that the rectangle that we created for ourselves or the square, whatever it is that you worked in, is exactly the same size, you can overlap your second drawing on top of your first drawing and if you align those rectangles with each other and you hold your drawings like this, overlap, up against a window, you're going to be able to clearly see the mistakes that you have made with those placements and your shapes. Notice what went wrong and you can try to do better the next time. 
the more you do this kind of exercise, the smaller and smaller your mistakes should become. This is such a great exercise, not only because it's for any level, but also because you can literally do it anywhere with a minimum amount of supplies. And it's the way that you can stay consistent with your art practice and continue building up essential skills, even during busy days. All right, you guys, that is gonna do it for today's video. I really, really hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it helpful. And if you did, pretty, pretty please make sure to give this video a thumbs up because it really helps support the work that I am doing here on YouTube and helps others get to know about my channel. Thank you so, so much for watching today. Don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell so that you can be notified of when I share my new videos, which happens every single week. Have a beautiful rest of the day and see you soon. Bye guys.